footage, a certain amount of film was shot which was not titled. Consequently, it has been difficult in some cases to know who took the film and who the people are in it. The first shots on this film are evidently of athletes preparing for the annual sports. Perhaps some of you in the audience can recognize yourselves. Notice too how long the shorts wear. That sounds Irish, but it's true. We don't realize how fashions change. After the athletes, we have a few shots of cricket practice at the nets, and once again, we don't know who the cricketers are. Now, let's take a look at the faith. In the first 50 years of the life of St Andrews College, four faiths have been organised for the purpose of raising funds for various objects connected with the school. These faiths were held in 1932, 1948, 1954, in 1958. The immense task of organization fell primarily on the shoulders of Mr. G.A.M. Hilson insofar as the three latter fates were concerned. In the Depression years from about 1930 to 1934, finances were a constant worry and the role had dropped very considerably. The old boys at that time did everything possible to help the college financially. They launched an endowment scheme whereby life insurance policies were taken out in the name of the college. They held dances in various country areas and sent the profits to the school. And they had a major share in the running of the 1932 fete and in stocking the various stalls. This monster fete raised the princely sum for those days of £1,642. An effort described at the time as one of the most successful of its type throughout New Zealand. Country areas were canvassed for goods of all types and older old boys will still remember the stream of farmers trucks bringing in produce and goods to the fete. It was opened by the Right Honourable the Prime Minister, Mr G. W. Forbes, the rector at the time being Mr A. K. Anderson and the Chairman of the Board of Governors, the Reverend L. Lawson Robinson. This film depicts the views of the fate begin with the pipe band leading the Reverend J. Lawson Robinson, Chairman of the Board, Mr. A. K. Anderson, the Rector, Mr. Forbes, the Prime Minister, and Mr. D. G. Sullivan, Mayor of Christchurch, to the official dais. On the dais, the speakers in turn are the Reverend Robinson, Mr. Forbes, and Mr. Sullivan. Following the official speeches, Mrs. Forbes and Sullivan are uh, led in state by the pipe band to the dock to be fined. Very comprehensive coverage is then given of the fate itself with stalls and sideshows. 
brief glimpses are seen of Mr. L.W. Stewart and Mr. M. Ledbetter. You can realize that this film uh, in this year of 1966 is very valuable and gives very interesting views of those almost faraway days of 1932. Nineteen thirty eight saw the twenty first anniversary celebration garden party and the band seen here marching down Papanui Road to the front gate, then up the drive and round to Strowan. Afterwards the band took part in a massed band display on the college grounds. During the Depression years, band numbers had fallen away. But by 1938, there was a renewed interest in learning the pipes and the drums. Here, the band is led by drum major D.M. McIntyre and pipe major C.D. Ogilvy. There are two drum majors flourishing and three drum majors in all.
Afterwards, the band took part in a massed band display on the college grounds. During the Depression years, band numbers had fallen away, but by 1938, there was a renewed interest in learning the pipes and the drums. Here, the band is led by drum major D.M. McIntyre and pipe major C.D. Ogilvy. There are two drum majors flourishing and three drum majors in all. that you are now seeing is one of the older films which was taken uh, in the year 1941 and covers a variety of events connected with the school at that time. At the beginning of the film are depicted the swimming sports of 1941 and uh, numerous races have been filmed. Possibly some in the audience may recognize themselves at that time uh, in some of those races. The St. Andrews Collegian says of the 1941 swimming sports, the annual swimming sports were held in fine weather early in the first term on February the 26th before the usual gallery of spectators. The senior standard showed an improvement on that of last year but times generally were well below the records. The outstanding swimmers were the Jacobson brothers. we see depicted some views of general levelling work in progress on the area at the back of the college grounds. Uh, one interesting feature is that all the work is being done with horses and uh, scoops. And the background to these particular shots are this, that in the Depression era and afterwards, when there was considerable unemployment, many men were given work on various schemes which could be made use of by institutions. Under one of these schemes, a number of men were employed at the college for some time on levelling work on the grounds. The late Mr. W.A.C. MacDonald, who was on the board at the time, supervised a good deal of this work. And possibly some who are in the audience may remember when this work was done and uh, the general aspects of it.
Then follows a view of the vegetable garden, which was adjacent to the swimming baths. In latter years, the vegetable garden has been dispensed with, but in the early years of the college, uh, full use was made of it, and as a matter of fact, it supplied all the vegetables which were required for the borders. And uh, as a matter of fact, some of the first borders will remember also that the college for a time had its own milk supply as well. Uh, following this, we are shown some football matches on the college grounds. the teams being played onto the field by the pipe band. Uh, there is a view of the late Mr. W.A.C. MacDonald on one of the spectators' stands. It is rather interesting to record that Thistledown, the first St. Andrews College magazine, reported on June the 8th, 1917 as follows. St. Andrews College started the football season yesterday with a test match against West Christchurch School. The match was drawn three all, and W.A.C. MacDonald scored a try. film concludes with a few shots of athletics. Now this is just a, a film which has depicted, as I said, quite a number of interesting events concerned with the college in that year of 1941, and for those of you who attended the school about that time, I am sure that it will be of considerable interest.
The St Andrews Collegian said of the 1941 pipe band, both in numbers and in quality, the 1941 pipe band was the best the college has ever had. This was due to various factors, the loss of only five members of the 1940 band, the greater experience of many members, the increasing number of new recruits, the continued efficient and patient service of Mr Fowler as tutor, the energetic help and advice of Mr Hilson in drumming and in training the band in display marching, and last but by no means least, the keenness and diligence of the boys themselves. These efforts cost much time, but brought their own reward, for a band's services have never been in greater